So I talked about the cheapest places to travel to in my last video, but today I want to flip that on its head and talk about some of the most expensive destinations to go to for some luxury. Maybe you want to treat yourself or go all out for a special occasion. No matter what, these spots are perfect for pure luxury. And I'll even go over some super expensive luxury at the end of this video that might surprise you or inspire you. Let's get into them. Maui. When it comes to pricey getaways, Maui in Hawaii takes the crown. I'm talking average hotel rates of $691 per night in July 2023. And that's before throwing in taxes, resort fees or parking. And hey, if you're into snorkeling, a half-day trip can start at around $150. Do the math for a family of four over a week, and yeah, you might shed a tear. But hey, if Maui fits your budget, here's some good news. Despite the wildfires, West Maui, excluding Lahaina, is open for business, and the island is all about welcoming respectful travelers. Monaco. Unless you've got some crazy luck at the casino, you better start saving up for this one. Monaco boasts the world's highest density of mega-rich residents, with one in every 39 people holding a net worth of $30 million or more. Surprisingly, hotel rooms won't totally break the bank, but brace yourself for the hit when you dive into Michelin star restaurants, fancy spas and high-end shopping. Monaco is all about the glam and it comes at a price. Switzerland. Switzerland is not exactly a budget-friendly destination. While it's relatively straightforward to plan and budget for accommodation and transport in advance, with all taxes and fees neatly laid out in Europe, meals are where things start getting a bit tricky. A Burger King Whopper value meal at Zurich train station will set you back nearly 18 Swiss francs, which is almost $20. And if you're thinking of a nice sit-down restaurant, be ready for some serious eye-watering expenses. Plan on spending around 35 francs for a main dish, and that's before you even think about adding appetizers, drinks or dessert. Switzerland is a stunning place, but it does come with a price tag. French Polynesia. All right, let's talk about French Polynesia, Tahiti, Bora Bora, Maria, all those dreamy islands. They're like the epitome of paradise. But let me warn you, they come with a hefty price tag. Travelers often want that picture-perfect luxury experience, and that desire doesn't make things any cheaper. So if you're thinking of an overwater bungalow in Bora Bora, you're looking at shelling out at least $800 per night. And here's the kicker. That's not even all-inclusive. Yeah, paradise doesn't come cheap. And if you're planning to hop between these gorgeous islands, well, that's going to add up too. Flying is the go-to mode of transport, especially if you're heading to the more remote ones. French Polynesia is a dream, no doubt, but it does come with a price. A pretty steep one. Japan. Japan is a fantastic destination, but let's talk money. American travelers have been enjoying a favorable exchange rate with the yen having hit some record lows recently. You'd think that'd make things more budget friendly, but hold on. Increased demand and tourism are playing spoiler. Case in point, the cost of a 14-day rail pass in Japan shot up by over 50% as of October 2023. And if you're eyeing high-end hotels in Tokyo, be ready for a wallet workout Rates have soared by a whopping 33% compared to pre-pandemic levels, leaving places like New York City in the dust when it comes to rate increases. Japan's amazing, no doubt, but it comes with its own price tag. Dubai. Dubai, the glitzy gem of the United Arab Emirates, has the potential to be a budget-friendly destination. But let's be real, for most travelers, it ends up being a bit on the pricey side. If you're planning to stay in the heart of the action, hit up all the typical attractions and dine in those over-the-top places, get ready to bring your A-game credit cards, maybe even two. Just to give you a taste of what's in store, picture this. White truffled pizza for a cool $789, caviar dumplings at $42 each, or you can even add some edible gold leaf to a humble biryani for a mere $272. And that's all before you even think about hitting the shops. 
where brands like Bulgari, Cartier and Tiffany & Company are practically calling your name. Dubai is a dazzling experience, no doubt, but it often comes with a price tag to match the glitz and glamour. Gustavia, St. Bart's. This town is making wallets nervous. This Caribbean hotspot is all about fancy accommodations, averaging a jaw-dropping $1,770 per night. But get this, once you're there, you can chill on the beautiful beaches with the gorgeous sand and cute French-style homes. It's a magnet for travellers. But it comes at a cost. According to the travel experts at Florida Panhandle, Gustavia is officially the most expensive place to travel. They crunched numbers from tons of vacation spots, considering everything like where you crash, how you get there, what you eat, and cool things to do. And Gustavia didn't just make the list. It aced it. On average, spending a day in this fancy town will set you back $1,852, and that's not even including the flight. So why is Gustavia so pricey? Well, for one, lots of stuff has to be brought in because it's an island. Plus, it's got this rep for being a playground for the rich. So when you're there, be ready to spend. Getting there is no budget adventure either. If you're flying, a round trip from Los Angeles to the tiny Gustav III airport costs around $2,772. But if you're feeling extra fancy, you can get there by boat and join the scene at Gustavia Harbour, where multi-million dollar yachts are the norm. And once you're on the island, get ready for more spending, especially on where you crash. But don't worry, the famous beaches like Shell Beach are free. Beyond the fancy hotels, there's a lot to explore, old churches, hikes, yoga classes, high-end stores, and restaurants where a meal is around $58 on average. So, Gustavia might be a dreamy spot, but be ready to dig deep into those pockets. It's a pricey paradise, but for many, the experience is totally worth it. Antarctica. So, touring Antarctica is becoming more accessible, but it's gonna hit your wallet pretty hard. The average cruise sets you back $1,000 per person, per day for a basic room. And it's not uncommon for prices to be double or even triple that. If you're flying in, be prepared to dig even deeper a five-hour trip from Punta Arenas, Chile to King George Island, off the coast of the Antarctic Peninsula, with a chance to see penguins and icy landscapes costs a staggering $6,600. Yep. It's not your average vacation budget. And now let's break down why these trips to Antarctica can cost you an arm and a leg. The factors? Well, the number of days when you book, the ship type and where you're going. Cruises to places like Falkland Islands and South Georgia or voyages to the Weddell Sea with Emperor Penguins can be the priciest because they're longer. And cruise costs vary big time based on the ship. Simple converted research vessels are affordable, ranging from just under $5,000 to $8,000 per person. They're like cruising base camps, basic but comfy. If you're up for more luxury, the modern fancy ships will set you back $15,000 or more. You can expect amenities like jacuzzis, spas, gourmet meals, and bigger cabins at this price. Now, let's talk about what's included in these cruise prices. Luxury cruises might seem steep initially, but they often cover stuff like pre-cruise hotel stays, round-trip charter flights, and transportation between the airport and the ship. Plus, you might get freebies like expedition parkers, drinks, Wi-Fi, and all shore excursions. On the flip side, budget cruises might not include flights, hotel stays, or optional activities like kayaking, and they might add extra fees. And let's not forget about extra costs like flights they're a big chunk. Flights from North America to Buenos Aires can average $1,200 to $1,500 per person. And the round trip flight from Buenos Aires to Ushuaia can cost an extra $300 to $1,000. If you're into extreme activities like scuba diving, that can add up too. And here's the deal with timing. High season from mid-December to the end of February is pricier. November and March are cheaper, saving you about 20%. So if you're dreaming of chilling with penguins in Antarctica, start saving those pennies. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I'd appreciate if you like and subscribe.